Mora, salary negotiable. Look, Traveler, an urgent hiring notice, and they're paying top Mora, too! Oh, Paimon likes this. Hmm. You're right, it is strange. Do you think something happened to Yen Xiao? Because that guy barely lets anyone ever set foot in his kitchen. Doesn't exactly seem like the type to hire help. The notice says interested parties should go upstairs and talk to the innkeeper, Huayan. Should we go and see what's up? Uh, well, that. And to check up on Yan Xiao, of course. The best way to travel. Sound of rain masks the enemy's footsteps. Stay alert. Uh, there's really no need for this. It's just a little burn, that's all. It won't get in the way of my work. Perhaps not, but continuing to work will only hinder your recovery. You need to rest for a few days. We'll figure something out. Huayan! Yan Xiao! Oh? Traveler and Paimon! What brings you to this neck of the woods? And we decided to come check out... Um... Check up on Yan Xiao. Uh, I knew we shouldn't have posted that notice. It's really nothing to worry about. I'm fine, I swear. How kind of you. My thanks to you both. And thanks on Yan Xiao's behalf, too. There's nothing to be embarrassed about, Yan Xiao. Just tell them what happened. Oh, all right. Well, basically, we had a lot of guests pouring in for the lantern ride. Things got busy, I started rushing, and I ended up accidentally burning my hand while, well, you know what they say. Play with fire long enough and you're bound to get burned. E even the best chefs slip up sometimes. A anyway, it's nothing, uh, just a tiny burn. I can still... Now, now, I don't want you pushing yourself. You'll only make it worse, and then you'll be looking at more than just a couple of days off to recover. But the lantern rites only just finished, and we're still getting tons of guests. Now's not a good time for me to rest. B uh, plus, lots of the guests are visiting from other nations. We can't just bring in some random chef off the street. We have a reputation to uphold. I, I refuse to let someone else ruin the good name we've made for ourselves here. <laughs> Listen to you. Anyone would think that you're the boss and not me. But he's not wrong. Yan Shao was one of the favorites in the Masterful Chefs Tournament. No matter how you look at it, his are big boots to fill. I don't mean to boast, but any chef of my caliber probably has their own restaurant to look after. It's not going to be easy to find someone who's got the skills and has the time to help us out. Hmm. Looks like we might have to increase the pay we're offering even further. Hmm. Do we know anyone that's a good chef and has the time to help out? Oh, of course, you! Oh, right. Yes, now I think about it. I do recall hearing good things about your cooking ability. 
I suppose I'd added you to my mental list of people who can hold their own in a combat situation, but forgot you can cook. Um, why are you even keeping a mental list of people who can fight? <laughs> Maybe a story for another time. More importantly, I'm sure Yan Xiao would be comfortable leaving his kitchen in your hands, if anyone's. What do you think, Yan Xiao? Well, since it's you, I suppose that's better than anyone else. What do you think, Traveler? Should we do it? <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? Well, I'm a man of my word. You'll be compensated generously for your work. I should warn you that cooking for customers is quite a different ballgame from cooking for yourself, so I'll stick around the kitchen over the next few days to help smooth things over. Oh, so he's not leaving the kitchen after all? I believe there's some spare kitchenware here at the inn. Boss, would you mind? Of course, of course. I'll take care of it. Whew. All done. Come, take a look. This was made with your measurements in mind. Ah, it's nothing. A little handicraft and elbow grease goes a long way. All right, Yan Xiao. I'll leave you to take it from here. You really went to all the trouble of building a new stovetop? What was wrong with the original? Boy, you really hate when people touch your stuff, huh? No, no, it's nothing like that. As Boss always says, hire who you trust and trust who you hire. I just thought the original setup might be a little, um, tall for you. Ahem. <clears throat> uh, anyway, as I was saying, cooking for guests is different from cooking for yourself. Not only do you have to execute on taste, aroma, and appearance, but you also need to ensure speed, precision, and consistency. Having the right equipment is a big part of that. Ill-suited equipment doesn't just make the job more tiring, it also slows you down. And paying customers don't have unlimited patience. Sometimes cooking is all about being well prepared. That's how you ensure speed. Okay, and what about precision and consistency? Ah, precision all comes down to using your eyes. Where to slice into a particular cut of meat, how much oil to use, how to tell when a dish is done cooking. When you cook for yourself, you can always add salt if it's too bland or add water if it's too salty. You can tweak the taste as you go, but in a restaurant, there's not that much room for trial and error. Worst case scenario, Paimon can deal with any subpar dishes by making sure they get properly disposed of. <laughs> the final thing you have to focus on is consistency. You have to be able to handle the most challenging orders with the same level of technique and skill as the easiest ones. This is particularly important when you have guests from all over, each with their own tastes and preferences. You have to cater to their own dietary needs while also giving them the opportunity to enjoy our local delicacies. Uh, this last point is making Paimon's head spin. <laughs> Don't worry. Matter of fact, someone as well-traveled as you may even have a better handle on it than me once you get started. And of course, I'll be around to help you over the next few days. I don't think we'll have any trouble making all our guests feel right at home. There's no time to lose, so let's get started. I imagine you probably have a good handle on the cooking side of things already. 
What you need to pay attention to is remembering each table's order. Try not to get them mixed up. Oh, Paimon's memory is like a steel trap! This is gonna be a cinch! Uh, what chicken are we on again? Table one was onions, but no chilies. Table two was chilies, but no onions. And table three was, uh, table three was chilies, but hold the chilies? Ah! Was Paimon just sleep floating? Uh, we didn't even get a break in the middle. Paimon's brain has turned to mush. Is it always this busy here? No, but this is peak season. You both did a mighty fine job for your first time serving guests at the inn. Luckily, all our customers were familiar faces this time around, so we didn't get any strange requests. Otherwise, today would have been even more challenging. No strange request? Someone asked for almond tofu drizzled in soy sauce. Even Paimon has never tried that combination. <laughs> it's a wide world out there. People have all kinds of different tastes. Being able to cater to all is the real essence of Liyue cuisine. Also, the thing about requests is that they're usually very specific. So as long as you do what they asked, you're unlikely to have any issues. What's really tricky is when guests give you free reign to do anything you want. Uh, excuse me. Are you still open by any chance? Huh? Paimon knows that voice. <gasps> Let's go check it out! Uh, what should we do? It doesn't look like anyone's here. Uh, if only we'd gotten here a bit sooner. It's alright. If we start building a campfire now, we'll be eating before too long. Right. Besides, if anyone's to blame, it's Linny. So busy being a greedy culture vulture that he lost track of time. Linny, Lynette, Fremenade, it is you! Paimon? So, is the Traveler here? Traveler, Paimon! What a nice surprise! gonna say the same thing! We're just lending a helping hand at the inn. Anyway, so that's how we ended up here. But what about you guys? Don't tell us. Uh, father sent you on another mission? No, quite the opposite, actually. We're in Liyue on vacation. And while we're here, I thought a cultural tour might be in order. Uh, uh, father said we deserve some rest after everything that happened recently. Otherwise, it could jeopardize our next mission. It's not every day we get this kind of opportunity. Lenny thought it might be fun to spend some time in Liyue, especially since it's lantern right season. We could hardly pass up the opportunity to watch a Liyue-style magic show. Although, I think they call it Conjuring here. Uh, in our time here, we've seen conjuring tricks incorporated into a Liyue opera show, and even a wushu dance. It was amazing. So, we decided to stay here for a few more days to see what other forms of inspiration this land might have in store for us. We visited Granny Roshin in Chingsa village not long ago, and today we continued our cultural tour in the area around here. In the end, though, we lost track of time. We haven't even eaten anything yet. <laughs> and speaking of eating, as you know, seafood is a big part of both Liyue and Fontaine cuisine, but it's cooked very differently here. We simply had to try some local seafood after coming all this way. That's another reason why we decided to extend our trip. Oh, need any recommendations? What have you tried so far? That fish one with the misleading name. 
Sounds bland, but it's drowning in hot chilies. Oh, you mean black back perch soup? You're right, the name doesn't give much away. <laughs> it looked and smelled so appetizing that Lynette took a huge mouthful. Blissfully unaware that she was about to set her mouth on fire, she could barely speak for the rest of the day after that. Uh, luckily, that wasn't a huge adjustment for her. What? Aren't you guys hungry too? Uh, yes, a little. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I'm ready to eat. Traveler, I'm afraid we'll have to send you back to the kitchen now. Hmm, good question. I doubt we'll be able to decipher the menu, so why don't you recommend something? You should be pretty familiar with our tastes. Uh, one more thing. Please, if you have a heart, don't make it spicy. <laughs> Fontaine, huh? No wonder they can't handle too much spice. Still, if we make the food too bland, they might as well be eating back home. Hmm. There's this crab and shrimp stir-fry I know that could work. It's quite heavily seasoned, but it's a lot milder than it looks. It has a light but really satisfying flavor. Ooh, that sounds perfect! What's it called? <laughs> well, this is where it gets interesting. They call it the Palace Jewels. The crab roe is supposed to look like pearls of gold, and the shrimp meat like chunks of jade. Here's the recipe. When you're ready, go ahead and give it a try.
Um... Ah, uh, yes. We meant to say, you two must be tired after a long day of work. Do you want to eat with us? Oh. Now that you mention it, Paimon is a little hungry. Well, if you insist, then who are we to refuse? <laughs> oh, right! Of course. You're still our customers. Uh, why aren't you eating? The sauce looks a little overpowering. Oh, uh, according to Liu at custom, it's probably good table manners to let someone else go first. <clears throat> Looks delicious, traveler. I guess I'll dig in first. Here goes. What is it? Do you need some water? No. It's delicious. The flavor is so pure. It's drenched in sauce, but somehow it just enhances the natural flavor of the seafood. T try it for yourselves. Um, uh, all right. <laughs> what is that? Crab roe? Yep, you have quite the palate, Lynette! No wonder it pairs so well with the shrimp meat. I've never seen it prepared this way before. According to the creator, chewy crab, compliments succulent shrimp, making a spectacular seafood ensemble with a succulent flavor and luscious mouthfeel. The crab roe glitters like pearls of gold, and the shrimp shines like chunks of jade. Hence its name, the Palace Jewels. So that's where the name comes from. Huh. I suppose it's quite fitting then. Huh. Was Paimon always this well-spoken? This dish must be right up your alley, Lynette. Huh? I heard that in Liyue, the biggest compliment you can pay to the chef is to leave a clean plate. It's delicious. Thank you ever so much. Wait, don't fight over it! Hey, leave some for Paimon! So your friends like the dish, huh? Well done! Not bad at all for your first day on the job. There'll be more to come, so keep it up. What's the...
Begin. Come <laughs> on. 
Morning. The boss tells me that both new and returning customers have nothing but good things to say about you. <laughs> I have to admit, I was a little worried about throwing you right into the deep end, but it looks like you've got what it takes to handle the day-to-day -day here. So it should be plain sailing. Well, just as long as we don't run into any extremely picky customers with unreasonably specific requests. Oh, have you had someone like that before? Of course. The worst are those old scholars who have barely cooked a day in their life, but think reading a stack of books on the topic makes them the expert. They criticize you for no reason, claiming your cooking method isn't faithful to the original, or that the flavor profile isn't authentic because you used an ingredient that wasn't in their beloved centuries-old version of the recipe. This is Wang Shuin. Hmm, it does have the look and feel of a time-honored establishment. of your signature dishes, please, as fast as you can serve them. The most expensive ones. Farzan! Oops, uh, Madam Farzan. <laughs> oh my. Traveler, Paimon, whatever are you doing here? We could ask you the same thing. Where'd you suddenly get the funds to go sightseeing? 
I'm to order the most expensive things on the menu. <laughs> I'm not here to sightsee. Exemplary scholars like myself are highly sought after by cruise operators in need of an onboard consultant as they travel the world. Uh, uh, Madame Farzan, please, uh, slow down. Uh, none of us slept last night. How come Madame Farzan still has so much energy? Uh, if she's really over a hundred years old, I don't understand how she keeps going. It's all my fault. She's been like this. Layla! And Dory? Huh. Never would have bet on this company. Temporary chef, huh? Wow. No rest for the wicked. Well, if the chef here is trusting you to run his whole kitchen, then I've got no doubt we're in for some authentic Leo specialties. So, why are you all in Leo again? Something about being an onboard consultant? I got my hands on a new boat from Fontaine a while ago, equipped with cutting edge navigation technology. If we manage to spread the word, it could have huge business potential. Right now, we're doing some test runs. We sailed from Port Ormos to Rito, then from Rito to Liyue Harbor. Next, we're planning to go to Dornman Port. Oh, Madame Farazan and me were hired to fine-tune the compass and other equipment. We sailed around the Sea of Clouds all of last night to put the system through some stress testing. Uh, over time for which they'll both be fairly compensated. They're both here willingly. The contract is crystal clear on that. You really cover all your bases, don't you? Well, time on guess. Paying the expenses is part of the compensation, isn't it? No wonder Madame Farozan is going for all the most expensive dishes. <laughs> it's not every day someone tells you to order whatever you like. Now, first up, we'll have the... <clears throat> Farazan, uh, Madame Farazan, that is. While I am more than happy to treat you both to the most expensive dishes on the menu, we must remember that most expensive does not always mean best. I've heard that the most expensive dishes in Liyue are usually either seafood-based or take an exceptionally long time to prepare. Now, I don't know about you two, but after so many days at sea, I don't think I can so much as look at another piece of seafood again for at least the foreseeable future. Huh. That's actually a good point. Not to mention that poor Layla here looks like she's about to faint from hunger. Huh? Oh, that's not because of hunger. Surely the wise and virtuous Madame Farazan could not bear to watch her poor students sit here and waste away. Oh, well, of course I care about my students' well-being, but why do I feel like I'm being tricked? So, let's not order anything that'll take too long to prepare. Aside from that, and seafood, we'll take whatever other expensive dishes you have. Over to you, Traveler! Time to act. So... Expensive, but no seafood, and nothing that takes too long to cook. That rules out pretty much our entire menu. <sighs> Do these people get a kick out of being impossible to please? Oh, that Dory! Is she doing this on purpose? 
This isn't Leoli Pavilion or Xinhua Kiosk. This is Wangshu Inn. We don't stock up on rare and exotic ingredients. We only get them in if someone puts in a special reservation. <sighs> well, if we're stuck with regular ingredients and we're on a time limit, there's only one way to bump up the price. And that's by cooking a dish that uses the chef's expertise and creativity to the fullest. As it happens, I know a recipe for something called trembling strings and rushing reeds. It can be whipped up quickly with what we already have in the kitchen. One plate usually goes for 30,000 mora. 30,000? But if it's quick to make and isn't fancy, what exactly makes it so special? Quick doesn't have to mean quick and easy. To perfect this dish, you need expert knife work and very precise control over the heat. You have to finely slice several different types of meat into fine threads, knead them together into strips, then gently stir-fry them in the pan. What you end up with is a whole variety of flavors that come through layer by layer. This dish is unique in offering a harmonious blend of multiple kinds of meat, all cooked to perfection, while still bursting with their own distinct flavors. Do it right, and you've got a culinary masterpiece in your hands. But if you botch it, it's just a bunch of meat thrown on a plate. Oh, Paimon gets it now! So this dish gets its value not from the ingredients, but the chef's expertise! Now, don't worry. I can take care of the kneading and other prep work for you. You just focus on bringing it all together. Believe in yourself. You can do this. And if you mess it up, I'm almost to be happy to eat it. <laughs> Ooh, smells delightful! Oh, we meant to ask, have you two eaten breakfast yet? If not, why don't you join us at the table? Uh, did Dory just offer us a free meal? When did she become so generous? <laughs> Let's not forget that the biggest business deals are always settled over a meal. Come on, come on, come on, sit down and join us. Everyone, dig in. This dish looks simple enough, and I did my research, so surely it can't cost all that much. Worst case scenario, maybe 10,000 mora? This dish had better be worth working overtime all night for. Well, Traveler, this is the moment of truth. Oh, so tired, so sleepy. I just want to eat up and get to bed. Is
Is this... foul? Oh, wait. No, the texture is more like shroom boar. There's a different flavor in every bite. And the discerning palate might detect a hint of something smoked, too. Quite marvelous. How is this made? Ham? But I don't see any ham anywhere. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha! So you've noticed. Yep, every single strip is kneaded from several different kinds of meat. Paimon and Yan Xiao put in a lot of effort to make it just right. Uh, so I'm not an expert or anything, but don't different meats have different cooking times? Uh, uh, how is everything in this dish cooked to perfection? Well, you see, um, that's a trade secret. Wow, so this dish really is one of a kind. That makes the whole trip worth it. By the way, does this special dish have a name? Ah, Paimon forgot to mention that part. The dish is called Trembling Strings and Rushing Reeds. Alluding to the way that the different threads of meat are woven together. And also... The complex layers of flavor, yes? Akin to the harmonies of a musical ensemble. The name, if I'm not mistaken, is a Leo idiom that evokes a vigorous orchestral performance featuring both stringed and wind instruments playing together. Mm, quite an apt name for this dish. Uh, how did you know all that? Every student has to master at least 20 languages before they graduate. Wait, is that not a requirement anymore? Uh, huh? Oh, that used to be a thing? Oh, Hyman almost forgot that you're also from Harabitat. So, um, anyway, how much does this dish cost? Oh, don't worry, not too much. That'll be, uh, 30,000 more, please and thank you. 30,000? <sighs> uh, about that, Paimon, traveler, I merely invited you to join us at the table, did I not? I don't believe I committed to paying for you. So, perhaps we could split the bill accordingly? Oh, Paimon knew it was too good to be true. Hey, there's no need to... Oh, uh, well, it was your hard work anyway. You can call the shots. 20% off of 30,000? <sighs> That's still a pretty hefty expense. <sighs> all right, all right. I'll just consider that the cost of learning about this dish. Once I'm back in Sumeru... I'll be sure to find someone to help me recreate the dish. And then, and then, I'll make it all back. We're off to a good start this morning. Keep up the good work. I'm counting on you. <laughs>